Thank you for joining uh, PCR Spotlight. My name is William Wines, and I'm pleased to welcome Professor John Laffey. He's from Anywhere Galway. He's Professor of uh, Anesthesiology and Intensive Care Medicine. And I'm also welcoming Dr. Atif Shazad, who's a bioengineer working at NUI Galway, and he's directing the Smart Senses Lab. Today, we will talk about one respirator to more than one patient. And during the COVID crisis, when facilities have been overwhelmed, and specifically the availability of intensive care beds or capacity for ventilation has been overwhelmed by the number of patients needing these treatments, we've seen some outrageous statements on the social media and elsewhere. How you can connect two patients, four patients, up to eight patients on a single respirator machine. Hard to believe, really. So I'm turning to you, John. Considering the need, what's the rationale for this? And what's real and what's fake? Uh, thanks, William. Th this is something, of course, that has been forced on us by the sheer numbers of patients requiring ventilatory support. Uh, it is very much a, a last resort, but we do know of tragic situations uh, in countries in Europe and in South America where physicians have had to ration care. So they've had to choose which patient got a ventilator. Uh, and we really want to avoid that happening. So sharing a ventilator is a way to upscale your infrastructure to allow you to ventilate more than one patient. Uh, and it's in that setting where it's something you can do as opposed to denying care on the basis of not having enough equipment that you would contemplate trying to do something like this. That sounds like a great opportunity, but not being a specialist, still immediately I think of risks of connecting more than one person to a single machine. How do you handle that? Yes, there, I think there, there are significant risks. And the concern, uh, as you've already mentioned, is that some very basic solutions and simplistic approaches are being suggested. This, this idea of eight patients from a single ventilator um, is, is simply unfeasible. Uh, the, the problem is that when you share, uh, at least in a lot of the systems that are being discussed, the patient, all the patients get the exact same settings from the ventilator. Uh, and this is a problem because these patients have very significant lung disease and damage due to COVID and their requirements will be quite different. So what we need are systems that can individualize the care to more than one patient or individualize the settings for more than one patient. There's also this, again, sort of simplistic idea that because we double the capacity with our ventilators, we can treat twice as many patients. However, the real uh, uh, pinch point is actually our nursing and physician staff uh, to maybe have them available. And sharing ventilators in greatly increases the complexity of how you have to manage these patients. Excellent. So the, the next question then is, is going to be about um, what, what are the solutions that you have designed or you can think of? Yes, thanks William. So in, in early March, when we were watching what was happening in Italy, uh, we came together and when I say we, I mean a collaboration of engineers, scientists and physicians uh, led by Professor Martin O'Halloran uh, by a chief uh, and by myself as a clinician to try to troubleshoot and identify key challenges that we were going to face if we were to deal with the numbers of patients that our Italian colleagues were dealing with. And what we identified was that we may need to share ventilators and that we would need to do it in a way that would allow us to safely and effectively control each patient's ventilatory parameters. So controlling the breath size, controlling the pressures the patients would uh, experience. Uh, and to have a monitoring solutions that would allow us to monitor what each patient was getting. So I'm going to uh, ask Atif, uh, who is our bioengineering expert on this project, 
to talk us through just exactly these solutions in a little more detail. Thank you, John. Um, and as John mentioned that this is really um, a nice collaboration between engineers, scientists, local medtech industry and clinicians here in Galway. I was amazed to see how people came up to help and to contribute this um, to, to contribute to develop this project. So the idea there, um, which was um, again originated by uh, John and team, was to have a safe delivery of mechanical ventilation to more than one patient. And we were then told that um, that the, the, the safety and effective delivery are the two key uh, components that we should focus while we're designing this system. We learned from the existing solutions that were um, being published. Um, we saw some tweets um, where people have developed solutions, similar solutions for ventilation delivery to multiple patients. But we were told that we, we, we can at least double the capacity of the existing system to increase the ICU capacity. So based on the, the learning from the existing solutions and what we had uh, brainstorming between the, the broader team, we came up with a schematic as shown here, um, where um, the single ventilator is shared between two patients. The blue, dark blue and light blue uh, lines show the inspiratory line and purple and light purple and dark purple lines show the expiratory uh, lines. The idea was to have control on the delivery of the, the, the gases and also monitor at the same time to get the real time feedback from individual patient. And as it was highlighted um, that the, the, the both patients can have different compliance which means they could respond differently even if we have similar flow of gas from the source. So we had two restrictors as shown in, in uh, green dots, um, variable flow restrictors. And then we had uh, one wave walls on each side on each inspiratory line to minimize the contamination. Um, we had then two sensors um, uh, attached um, on each limb and two open source monitors has been developed to keep track of three key, three key parameters. The key consideration that we had at that time was simplicity, safety, and availability. And major was availability because the idea was really to have a system that can help increase the capacity in Ireland as well as anywhere across the world where someone would need to share the ventilator between multiple patients. So we were thinking to how we can simplify the design while at the same time use the components and parts which are readily available in hospitals. Similarly, if we look at our um, display unit or monitoring unit as shown on the next slide, is where um, we had two individual monitors to show three key clinical parameters that were required. And in the image, um, our colleague at Galway Hospital, Dr. David Hennan, is demonstrating this, um, the functionality of this uh, shared ventilation system. And the key consideration that we had was responsiveness, which means the system should re respond real time to any variations caused in the flow to each patient. It should be simple enough that any uh, healthcare staff could use it without any additional training because you don't have time for training in, in such a such, um, uh, tragic uh, environment and, and urgent um, need was there to have a system in the hospital within a few weeks. And the third one was again availability for the electronic parts that these electronic parts should be available or at least the solution should be replicable anywhere across the world. So the th three key clinical variables that we were told that should be monitored were tidal volume, PEEP, and, and peak pressure. While the system works on titration of tidal volume to each individual patient. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll bring back uh, John here to talk uh, briefly about what was the requirement, how we came up to the three key, key clinical parameters that we wanted to monitor. Uh, thanks, Atif. So we were in the fortunate situation that we have not had to use this system uh, in Ireland, uh, but what we have done is we have extensively tested it. Uh, and so we have simulated the kinds of 
uh, pulmonary conditions you'd see in patients of different size, different severity of COVID disease. And we have found that we've been able to effectively control tidal volumes and peak pressures with this system. Uh, and as Atif has said, this is using uh, pieces of equipment that you'll find in your, in your intensive care unit or in your operating room. And this is all clinically approved equipment. Uh, and so you, you can be confident that it's uh, well-tested equipment that you can rely on. Um, and the solution, the monitoring solution, is a really simple and elegant solution. That's absolutely great and, and fascinating work. Uh, thank you for sharing it. I'm sure that during this collaborative effort, you came across a number of additional needs that perhaps for the future you may want to tackle. John? Yeah, yes, yes, William, we have. I mean, we, we are continuing to uh, work and refine the, uh, the shared ventilation system that's been developed. Um, we, we're now very much looking outwards because uh, we're in the happy situation, as I've said, that we are not needing to use it here. However, we are talking with colleagues in the US and in South America where the situation is, is quite different and we are providing our know-how and making this available online at GalwayVenture.com. And what we're working on now is looking at systems to individually configure the PEEP or the end expiratory pressure, which helps to open up lung, uh, to look at modifying the inspired oxygen concentrations by, by bleeding oxygen into the, in the limbs uh, of the two circuits, and to look at ways where we may be able to use these systems where we allow patients to initiate some of the breathing themselves, which is a key part of the weaning process. We did also originally identify other challenges. So a lot of patients are, will be supported by mechanisms other than invasive mechanical ventilation. But the concern here has been for aerosol spread of COVID-19 when you're using these systems because they're not fully closed. So we've been developing masks and systems to reduce aerosol spread so that we can more safely use high flow systems, more safely use non-invasive ventilation, and also to more safely manage the airway. So when we place the patient on the ventilator, there is a risk to the healthcare workers and the team at that time. So again, to reduce that risk. So these are all projects that we've identified and that we're working on as part of this Galway Inspires collaboration. So again, Atif, I might just ask you to give us maybe a couple of uh, words or sentences just to describe some of these uh, other initiatives. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, as I said, um, as he commended the, the, the motivational levels that we had at start from different uh, people coming from different areas. Uh, we have a huge medtech industry here in, in um, Galway and support from the academics and researchers in the university. Um, that was amazing. Um, but with the time uh, and the coronavirus situation getting better here in Ireland, people now have gone back to their daily job. Um, while at the same time, we are still um, working on a number of uh, fronts that include safer delivery of um, high flow gas, um, the, where there, we are developing um, a hood to protect um, any aerosolization to get into air and other similar solutions. This is, I think, the point where any funding support from um, national bodies or international bodies will really help uh, people like us or anyone else working um, to fight against uh, this COVID-19 to develop new solutions and systems to, to better protect um, us from um, this COVID-19 anywhere uh, across the world where the virus is still um, there. Um, I think the national support or international support in terms of funding will be very helpful to continue development on of the existing solutions uh, that are being developed and also to work on the new fronts um, that are still pending um, due to uh, unavailability of resources, both human resources and also the materials and components and parts that are required. Um, um, I, I think the key challenge is really to keep the motivation going. 
Well, thank you very much to all of you listening. Thank you for, for joining. Um, remember the uh, GalwayVenture.com website. And at this point in time, I'd like to thank uh, Prof. Lafi and, and Shazad and the team for sharing their work. And maybe, John, you, you may want to give us your key summary statements. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, William. Uh, I must say it's been a pleasure and a privilege to be involved in this venture. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is part, I hope, of an ongoing, um, you know, collaboration that uh, we will continue to explore and leverage. Because, of course, the sad truth is that, uh, you know, the, the pandemics are not going away. We, we may have a second surge, we may have future pandemics. And so this, this you know, unique situation of, of a global pandemic has really compelled us to look at uh, different approaches to mechanical ventilation and to consider options we would never, you know, really normally consider like sharing a mechanical ventilator. Um, because we really do need to avoid the situations where doctors have to ration care uh, on the basis of the equipment they have available. And so there are going to be more pandemics and we have to find ways to provide safe and effective respiratory support, whether that's high flow oxygen, non-invasive ventilation or invasive ventilation to as many patients as are going to require it anywhere in the world and at any time that they do require it. And that is the global challenge that we at Galway and Spires Collaboration are trying to contribute to. Um, we have, uh, for those of you who uh, are particularly interested around the, the mechanics and the ethics and so forth of ventilator sharing, uh, I would refer you to this article that uh, I co-authored with colleagues uh, in the UK, where we looked at the idea of ventilator sharing and the risks and benefits of this approach.